Everyone's favorite entity, the Hampton Beach Village District. Uh, we've got two money warrant articles. They're both budget warrant articles. For those who do not know, just to be clear, the Hampton Beach Village District actually has not one but two budgets. Um, one is for the general government side of the world, and the other is for the so-called cultural and recreation side of the world. They're two separate budgets. And so we'll be dealing with each of them separately. So. Article 2 is to raise uh, $66,180 for the general government, which everyone in the village district pays taxes for. Um, any questions, issues, or whatever? Yeah, I have some. Go ahead, Jerry. Um, this is about the second time, maybe the third, that I've seen a budget like this, <laughs> really. It's usually uh, municipal or schools, or, or 21, I say 21, I say 90. Okay, the um, in the general government first section. First section. First, before you start, yeah, I would like to thank you all for having us. I'm Chuck Rage, and this is Maureen Buckley. We're both commissioners of the Hampton Beach Village District, so I didn't want to interrupt you, but so people at home know who you're talking to. Uh, we we'll watch you on television. Everybody <laughs> knows Chuck and Maureen. Give me a break. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I take a look at this quickly and I see that it's up 30% from the three-year averages. Uh, when I see your 66,780, three-year average is about 51K and you're going up to 66, that's a jump of about 30%. But, and looking at the line items, the, 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 the general government, um, is, that, uh, uh, is that for people who have declared themselves exempt? Yes, that's okay. correct, yeah. So, I'm looking at the line items, and are these line items germane to the to the general government, or are they uh, or or not? I mean, are they are they really like legal, for instance? Is this the only line item? I don't see legal up here anywhere else down below in the culture and rec section. Why do I only see legal up in the general government, for um, instance? That's where it's always been. It's. Uh I know you love that. Uh, but most of the legal activity pertains to? To doing our uh, yearly uh, meetings, to have the me actual meeting. But and does it mostly pertain important. to the expenses shown under culture and recreation? I mean, the way you have it here, almost every one of these line items uh, could be construed as just simply germane to the exempt folks. And yet, I don't know if that's true or not. I look at things like uh, maintenance of the playground and, and uh, insurance doesn't show up down below. What kind of insurance is that, Chuck? Uh, uh, so liability. Liability insurance. For, for, for everything. For everything, yet it shows up totally only one area, and that's in the general government. So I, I guess uh, I look at every one of these line items and I say to myself, are they simply germane to the general government or should they be shared? Because I look at the well, culture. Everybody, every, everybody pays that on the general government. All the businesses as well pay both. So everything is paid. That small amount is probably a couple cups of coffee that the people are paying uh, a month in that in that. Well, if the, if the businesses are paying, the aren't, businesses are paying. Aren't they simply? Everything. Aren't they represented down here as well, though? Why would they're they? paying both? They pay both. So this is divided up by everybody, and this is divided up by just the. Okay, you take businesses. legal, Chuck. You got eight. You got six thousand dollars showing in the proposal. I don't see legal down below at all. Right. So when it was when when originally everybody paid their fair share. And then uh, they decided that they would split up into two different warrants. And this was all done through legal and through the, um, the legislature. So they basically picked what would be uh, in the general government budget uh, well, uh, well, originally. So, and we've just gone by that same budget for. But and when, then when, it, when you say originally, you're talking 1903? No, no, no <laughs> when, when it was split. When it was split. 1979. It was split. I thought it was done in the 70s, yeah. So. Uh, but in fact, you were one budget, but there were two distinct tax rates, even back then. Right? You were, you were processing one budget. Right. DRA said, wait a minute, that, you've been doing it that way, you've always done it that way, and it's wrong. 
You yeah. need two separate budgets. That's what DRA said. That's why you have two separate budgets today. It hasn't affected the taxes in any respect at all. There's I no don't believe that. That that's. I don't believe that. No. What am I missing? It was. It was to to. There were people that were upset that they were they were year-round residents, so they they split up the the budget. Yeah, that's so when they created the exempt non-exempt thing. Yeah, but DRA but there was only never, one budget even then. But DRA split it evenly to all the people. They, they that, made two budgets. Back in the day, I think the only other budget would, would have been uh, no, no, like DRA. Utility. Was it three years ago, Steve, when they put the software in that they required the two budgets? It's only been three or four years, yeah. tops. It's when they, it's when they put in the, uh, the software. new software yeah. that they required me to actually have two separate budgets. It has. That's the way it. It's the, the way software, it should have been anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then the, the software. It's the only way we could make it work. Right. They weren't going to customize the software just for the village district in Hampton, but. That's why we do it with two budgets. It's been like the last four years that we've had. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. Your two budgets are relatively new, three or four right, years old. I thought old. you were talking about but the exempt in the, in the, concept. The, the exempt concept is decades old. Yeah. And, that, and, and so that's what's, that was the point I was trying to make. Right. But, I mean, I, like I could it. shed a little light on Go that. Ahead, how, how did the floor get taken from me? Uh, well, I'm just trying to get clarification on that one point, and apparently there's more clarification coming. So okay. you'll have the floor back, Jerry. In well, the late 1970s, Senator Preston introduced mm -hmm. legislation which allowed a distinction between the commercial and the residential pieces of the village district. So, because there was co some concern at that time that the residents were underwriting commercial activities to an extent they didn't particularly want it. So that the genesis of the two classes in taxation arose <coughs> out of that legislation and it seems to have yeah. worked very well. We're, we're in agreement on on that historical note. Yeah. Um, go ahead, uh, Jerry. Well, yeah, that being the case though, Bob, it doesn't look to me like uh, what you said is true here because I look at these line items and I don't see any proportional amount down in the culture and recreational area. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, I can clarify this a little bit. Jerry, finish like. your question. And I mean, I see accountants and auditors for 80, uh, 8850 8, accountants and auditor and I say to myself does the exempt population really are they financing the total amount for accountants and auditors and I look down here under the culture in a uh, large article 3 here I don't see accountants and, <coughs> and uh, auditors anywhere so it looks to me like they're subsidizing the whole line item the whole uh, dollar amount I just want to speak on the legal part of it okay okay sure. <clears throat> A couple of years ago when we purchased that new parking lot from Clues, there was a lot of legal activity going on. Yeah. A lot going on between the town, between our own lawyer, yes. uh, getting things done. And when it was billed, it was specifically billed for, it was broken down, okay? So that particular year, I actually had, you, when, when she would bill me, if it was general government only, it was billed general government, and that's where it was paid from, this account. Now, what happened is that with so much activity that particular summer that it was going to, we were going to go over budget, general government. So I called the DRA and I said, what am I going to do? Because we can't go over budget. And she said, what's generating all this, you know, why, what's generating this problem? And I said, well, it's all the activity that has to do with the parking lot yeah. that we purchased. Yeah. And she told that they got on the a supervisor got on the line as well to tell me what to do. And they said, you go back to January 1st and you identify all of the stuff yeah. which had been identified. It's just that I wasn't paying it that way. And she said, you apply the stuff that has specifically to do with that parking lot. You apply it under the culture and recreation where you see parking lot and put it under supplies, et cetera. And I did. Oh, okay. And the problem went away immediately. Okay. So that did happen it only happened a few years ago to answer your question I see the supply okay so that in, the, in that <laughs> case it happened yeah, just want to make yeah, sure you okay. understand that and we should have had a line item that said park it was park a lot or something that's very interesting if I may Jerry I need to get clarification here yeah Steve um, I understand there was a law that was slipped in at the last minute several years ago where the parking income uh, belongs to cultural recreation and the parking expenses, namely payroll particularly, actually belongs to the general government. Is that true or not true? No. It's not true. No, it's, no, it's, it's just the, the way you lot. have it. It's right here. If you look at the thing in the parking lot, 
No, payrolls. no, the payroll and the, right, we fixed, there was a problem a couple years ago. It was that ago. way, but it's been fixed. We fixed okay, that. Good. All right, several thank you. Years thank ago. you for that. Sorry, Jerry, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, so, I mean. Uh, <clears throat> so it is a town meeting form of government. We actually uh, vote on the budget, and at any time, anybody can go and make a motion to move something from one to the other, and no one has of that particular item. So people have tried other items, and it hasn't gone through. Yeah. Jerry, continue. Yeah, I, I was looking at legal, and right now what you're requesting is $6,000, which is about 156% higher than the three-year average, which is what caught my eye. So uh, I, I just, uh, and I look at other things here. Insurance uh, is another line item that jumped. Uh, uh, well, it may not have jumped, but you're asking for seventeen five. and yet I don't see insurance anywhere down here under culture. <coughs> Culture and Rec. Uh, I don't get the impression that this Culture and Rec is 13 times bigger in dollars than the general government. Yet I don't see a proportional amount of money down here to 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 take some of these other items and to, to show sh that there's some sharing going on. That's my impression. Okay, okay that's it. All right, anything else, Jerry? No. All right, I didn't hear any questions in there. Does anyone else have any comments, questions? I would just comment on Jerry's comment. Uh -huh. The reason it is the insurance item is in general government is almost all of these activities are self-insured by the presenters. Okay. This is primarily insurance for the district. Okay. Uh, and we don't have but a few named insureds under those policies. Okay, uh, so why, but why, why wouldn't I find some dollar amount in the culture and rec? Because the people who are insured under this policy are the parking lot attendants who profit the village district by their efforts. Hmm. We, and they are employees of the village district. But all of the revenue they generate basically goes back to reduce the culture and recreation component of the budget. I think we're splitting here. It's 92% of this budget is culture and recreation 8% is general government. Well, I, this is what it was given to me. This is why I'm making my comments, that's all. Well, I'm just saying that I'm surprised to see almost every one of these line items, nothing is shared down below here that I can find. And I thought proportionally something ought to be down there. It almost looks like everything is paid for here when you talk insurance or legal or maintenance and so on. Uh, you know, sub supplies, you know, $7,200 for supplies. Office supplies. What do you? I don't see that down here. But I see this, I see some flies in the parking lot. But so I mean that's my impression with this general government. I think that it needs a little pruning and a little refining. You all set, Paul? No. I would uh, observe that I heard that the parking. I heard that the insurance, the named insurers, were actually related to the parking lot employees. They're they're part. They're insured under our policies because right. they are employees of the village district. We do not have many employees. Right. These bands are not employees. The people with the right. fireworks are not employees. The firework, uh, the fire shell we put on, put on the, the, none of those are employees in the village district. Mm -hmm. So the insurance is, I thought I heard you say the insurance was just basically covering parking lot employees, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, the general liability, it covers any of us who are named insurance under their policy should they be litigation. So it would include the commissioners and, yep. and so forth. It covers us as well. Treasure. Commissioners, yeah. yeah. And it playground. covers the playground. Playground. When someone falls and breaks their head. We all clear on that, right, Jerry? Yep. Okay. Brian. <coughs> yeah, thank you. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I looked at this budget over the weekend, and it brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> um, for many people in the room that I've worked with night and day for many years. Uh, Mr. Ladd is absolutely correct. Let me see if I can help my friend, Mr. Zanoy. Um, think about as owning a, a business and your insurance, your legal, your accounting, your uh, office supplies come under the umbrella of, in this case, the Hampton Village District is a government entity. This is required, uh, starting with payroll and legal and everything else. What you're going to hear about in a few minutes, and, and one of the things that wasn't used, and I know Senator Stiles is aware of this, because she was very unbelievably greatly involved in a lot of these. A lot of these things below, if not most, 
are involved as offshoots of what the village district provides to the public in the form of events. And so a lot, everything on here that Chuck and Maureen and Bob and Stephen have put forth and uh, throughout involve insurance certificates, insurance policies with another organization, that being the state of New Hampshire. And so when, you, when, when they talk about all these events that come up, which is wonderful, by the way, every year this gets better and better, and I, I only have a few questions later on. But the separation, as Mr. LeBranch said, had to do with the law that took place for whatever reason to separate out. Um, the, the, the thing I want to caution, though, you know, in fairness, the increases for the 2019 proposed, they're dealing with what everybody's dealing with, whether it's legal or accountants or... Uh, insurance, I, I don't so much have a problem with that, and, and it's not surprising, and I think Chuck remembers, you could, through the years, there's always been a higher number in culture and recreation. And so that area, and I, I do want to, before we go on to second session, I, I want to commend John Kane because, you know, it's interesting when you promote an area, and the Hampton Beach area is a large area, and you promote it in such a way that not only, um, you're getting your money's worth with John. But having been there all those years on the beach, and you know, and, and for those that know me, know if they want to ask me, I can tell them, I saw all these guys all the time. It's not just a matter of Chuck gabbling a meeting at 5.30 at the, at the village at precinct hall and Bob and them getting together. It's the nighttime work, the weekends, uh, the meetings. Uh, John and I, uh, Rich Rainier was down there all the time, sand sculpted. It is such a great story. And Hampton Beach is what it is because these folks, predominantly, and others, a great group of volunteers, have put a, a, a very concerted effort to bring us to that stage. And, and, I, and I have to say, too, it, it is proud to see Nancy here tonight because, you know, back when Nancy was a state rep, and of course now we're really going back, when her and I worked on the seawall together, it was a culmination of a lot of things that just made everything better. So in agreeing that, yeah, nobody wants to see costs go up, but I think as we discuss Article 3, you're going to hear more about from the commissioners and others um, <clears throat> what happens. I do commend them for their, their insight and to their foresight on purchasing the Clues parking, uh, the Clues hardware for parking lot. That, that's, that's vision. I mean, we need that. We need more of that. So I hope that helped because it really is part and parcel of an entity that has to be done right at the outset, and those expenses have to be incurred. So that's all I had to say on that. Anybody else? Okay, it's not universally accepted that the purchase of the Clues parking lot was a uh, great vision. Um, in any case, <laughs> it uh, is from a revenue <coughs> point of view. That's your opinion. Not everyone shares the opinion. That's all I'm saying. The majority of voters. I don't care well, how many. I said <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a factual statement. Yeah, you're right. Stands on its own. Doesn't need comment. Um, so we have a number of $66,180 for the general government budget. Does anyone wish to move that number or propose a different number? I'll move the 66180 to public hearing. I'll second it. And seconded by Mr. Fluff. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't want any conflicts, Steve. Oh, okay. okay. Trying to help you. <laughs> oh, okay. That's all right. Okay, any discussion on, any further discussion on the number? Great, uh, let us do our thing. All those in favor of 66,180, raise your hand. All those opposed, all those abstaining. Okay, everyone except Jerry uh, voted in favor. 